Tactical technician, diagnosis here. This is uh, my first night shoot. We're just gonna uh, we're gonna shoot a video on um, good cam crank correlation and exhaust back pressure. It's gonna be a, a two for one test. Um, one of those situations where we have a, a car that's uh, symptomatic, uh, could be lacking in power, could have correlation codes retrieved from a scan tool. It could have had a timing chain just put on it and it's acting problematic since then. Um, we're basically going to look at the relationship, when we say correlation, between the two camshafts and the crankshaft on this engine. The physical relationship of, the, of, the, of those components um, and prove out that they're where they should be. Um, the variables associated with that are sometimes uh, reluctor wheels will shift and flywheels will, will break and what the PCM sees is different from where the physical um, components are. So basically we're using the WPS in cylinder three, injectors disconnected. Um, I'm going to go into the scope and uh, get set up. We're going to uh, do this kind of kind of rough. I thought about ways of doing it, but we're going to start by getting hooked up here. Okay. All right, we're on the scope and we're going across. And let me start the car. I'm going to do this uh, this way. All right, let me just wait. I want to get a full screen because I want to take advantage of all the real estate for the test. I'm going to uh, first idle the car, then shut it off to get my baseline for zero and then do the, the the power brake for see the pressure. Here we go. Let me get this down here. Okay, that's idling. Let me shut it off. Get zero. Let me start it up again and get my pressure. We got it just in time. Okay, that's the one screen. Okay, here we go. First things first. Uh, let me kind of zoom in on our idle, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do this. I thought of it. This tool does have partitions like the Pico, but I I. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to kind of do it using some mathematics. I just think it's a little easier. And there's a little light up there. I can't do anything about them. I tried to get rid of that light. I can't. I can't get rid of it. Which is we're only on one channel. We, we're going to see the meat and potatoes, and that's the the correlation. That's the the timing of uh, the exhaust valve opening here, the intake valve opening here, the intake valve closing here. That's all. That measurement we make is real. Um, important in determining that, that physical relationship between the camshafts and the crankshafts. So first things first, I want to get the time between towers. I want to take my, my vertical cursor there and then my other vertical cursor here. And I want to get uh, my delta. I have 100, 101.2 milliseconds. Okay, that's uh, that's tower to tower. Uh, you know, variables, this car's a little, a little cold. That could be a speed. Speed, idle speed has it will affect this, but I got to use something. Um, so I know that I'm going to call it 100. For, for, uh, that's pretty close right now. I'm about 100. Um, I moved it more accurately, so that's a good number to work with. So right off the bat, I, I can do my division, and I know 25 milliseconds uh, would be bottom dead center. Then I'll measure my, where the exhaust valve opens. So I'll move this cursor here. I want to go to 25 milliseconds, which is right. Can I see that? All right, that's 20, 26, 25, is that, okay, that is 25 milliseconds. That is bottom dead center. So I'm trying to determine now the EVO, the exhaust valve opening on a car like this. Um, I've checked a lot of Hondas about between 35 and 45. So I want to see where I'm at with that. So I'm going to do my conversion. I'm going to go, I'm going to get it in milliseconds. Right when that EVO point happens, that transfer point, you see that definition? That's good definition as that exhaust valve opens. I have a, um, there's my time. So I'm gonna go with my cursors. I'm gonna look at my delta. That is 4.6 milliseconds. So I wanna do my conversion of milliseconds and degrees. So just bear with me, I got my calculator on my phone. I'm gonna do this. So we got a, we know we got 720 degrees divided by 100 is 7.2 degrees per millisecond. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we have a, our measurement, we have 4.6 milliseconds, so we're gonna multiply 4.6 times 7.2 to give us the degrees. And we'll be look what we, we end up with. 
Okay, my mouse fell. Okay. Um, 4.4.6. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we got 4.6 times. Six times seven point two equals thirty three point twelve degrees. So we're going to deem that good. So we know we're good. We're good on our on our EVO point here that came up to thirty three degrees. So next thing I want to do, I want to look at a uh, this point here and this point here to know uh, two other intake related measurements. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go, and I know that I got to come down here. No, other way, wrong way. Like here, I want to go to 50 milliseconds to establish top dead center or halfway point. Is that looking like 50? That is 50.2. I'm good with that. There is there is a there is top dead center, the end of the exhaust stroke. So I want to look at. I was telling you about that plateau. I want to go halfway between here and here, for the best of my my eyes can see, and I want to measure that in milliseconds. So that is 3.2 millis. That's my delta, the time between here. Now I got to do my math again. 3.2, 3.2 times 7.2 equals. I got 23 degrees. That's pretty good. That's, I'll live with that. I'm going to deem that good. I was telling you about that halfway point, that descending slide. That's 23 degrees. So now I want to go to the point of deepest vacuum, and I want to see what that is. And I always like to see about 40, and that's that little pocket there. I can extract. Uh, yeah, there we go. I can I give it more granularity there. That deep little pocket there and top dead center. My delta is 6 milliseconds. So let me clear, and I'll measure... Uh, Six times times seven point two equals. I got forty three. I'll live with that too. So that's forty three degrees, a point of deepest vacuum. The final measurement being, uh, I want to see how many degrees um, when the in, the intake valve closed. So I'm going to get it. Uh, keep this cursor here, and I'm going to put this guy to a hundred. I'm going to put twenty five. That would be bottom, that'd be 540 on the scale. Let me go back. I'll live with that. Is that, that is 25.8, okay? 25.8. So then I want to go and see where this guy is. I want to see where, it, that point where she just um, comes off her seat. I may use some vertical curse, some horizontal cursors here just to get it. Uh, let me see that, okay. Here we go. Right that point right here where they cross that amount of time in there. So I want to get a my delta x. Delta x would be see if I can read that. Is that 6.6 .6 milliseconds right there? From when I can really get a light on that. That's 6.6 .6 milliseconds. So I will multiply that by our 7.2, clear the calculator, 6.6 .6 times 7.2 equals 47.5. Okay, uh, my eyes aren't the greatest, uh, it's got some small numbers, 47.2, that's fairly close to 55. So we've got to say that uh, as far as correlation, the physical relationship between the camshaft, camshafts and the crankshaft would be good. Uh, a problematic car... If it does have a pretty severe coral, usually um, like a, a link on a timing chain or something, you, you'll see bad numbers. You'll see the EVO happen either too early or too late. You'll see the, the IVO, the intake valve, happening too late or too early. But nonetheless, let me get off this screen. We want to measure back pressure because that's the next part of this this deal. Um, let me get this guy back to one. Uh, I had it. At, I like one second. And let me get my down here okay this is uh the final part when i when i work the throttle right here is when i gave it the beans um and i put my right foot into it and this is a 
what I'm going to do is I want to I want to keep a cursor here because that's my baseline. That's zero. I want a vertical cursor there because that's going to tell me I want to baseline that. So um, that would be why. That's eight millivolts. That's very for all, okay. For all intents and purposes, we're going to call that zero. That's a very low number, from what I can see. That's our baseline. Okay, right there. That's four millivolts. Um, let me make sure that's uh, a little dark here. Okay. Y1. Okay, Y1. Four millivolts. We're going to deem that zero. Now I'm going to open this up and I want to look at that exhaust plateau. And we're going to determine back pressure. Right when I gave it the full tilt and boogie, you can see. Okay. See, we've lost our pockets. That's that's typical of a car that's um, under load. You don't see the exaggerated pockets. And what we can see here, let me go, not too hard. Let me can see here is we, we don't have that high plateau. Would indicate that we don't have a clogged exhaust. Um, that, and plus our number right here, remember, is zero. So basically there's very little, very little back pressure here. A clogged exhaust, I've seen them get really high. They're you know, just kind of, for, I've seen them get up here. Like that would be uh, 12 PSI, that would be 15, that would be 21 PSI. That usually you have an ascending spike here when the, when the catalytic converters are plugged. And um, this is a really good way to look, at a, to look at those two things right off the bat. It's a quick test. You get the transducer in the cylinder, you do it running, you get a long time base on the scope. You gotta gotta know your measurements. You know your good angles. You know what a good good cylinder looks like. Those four angles I mentioned: the uh, the exhaust valve opening, the 20 degrees after top dead center plateau descending, and the 40 degrees the point of deepest vacuum, and about the 50 50 to 55 degrees the point of um, intake valve closing when the piston's coming up on the compression stroke. Thank you very much.